Hello and welcome to our demonstration. My name is Todd Law and I work with Agilent Technologies in Vancouver, Canada. And today we will be giving a demonstration of stateful traffic blasting, which will show the effects of TCP in the presence of loss, delay, and queuing effects. And to do that, I will be using the Agilent Technologies N2X product as well as the Shunra Virtual Enterprise Network Appliance. The purpose of today's demo is to show the difference between stateful and stateless traffic blasting under lossy conditions, under lossy and delayed conditions, as well as to show the effects of stateful traffic blasting under a few different queuing mechanisms, specifically drop tail and RED or random early discard queuing. The physical setup for today's demonstration is as shown in this slide. On the bottom, we have the Agilent N2X and on the top we have the Shunra STA virtual network appliance. The Agilent N2X is connected to the Shunra STA on ports 101-1 and 101-3, um, shown drawn connected to the Shunra product in the upper part of the diagram. As well, we have the Agilent N2X ports 101-2 and 101-4 connected back to back in the, uh, through the red cable and the lower part of the diagram. Before we give the demonstration, of the Agilent and the Shunra working together, I'd like to simply do an N2X back-to-back -back demonstration to show what happens with stateful TCP traffic and stateless traffic simply with two test ports connected back-to-back. -back. The logical setup for this back-to-back uh, -back demonstration is simply as follows. We've connected test ports 101-2 to 101-4 and we'll be sending traffic from the IP address 192.168.100.10 to 192.168.100.200 and we'll be doing that with stateful and stateless traffic. To configure the back-to-back -back part of this demonstration, I'm going to configure some stateful and stateless traffic in the Agilent N2X Packets and Protocols application. First, I'll create some stateless traffic as follows. Let's create a single profile consisting of a single stream group and then go in and define the properties of that stream group. So here you can see the basic stream group editor, also commonly known as the PDU builder in the stateless traffic model of the Agilent N2X. First, let's set the encapsulation. So the default encapsulation for traffic or stateless traffic on the N2X is simply IP over ethernet, but let's add a TCP encapsulated uh, payload over that uh, IP packet. And we can do that by simply selecting the protocol that we want to add, choosing it from the list, and uh, clicking OK. Next, let's set the source and destination addresses for our stateless traffic. So a source address of 192.168.100.200, and then a destination address of 192.168.100.200. Dot 100, dot 10. With addressing set, let's go over to the general tab and set the packet length for our stateless traffic to be 1500 bytes. With our stateless traffic defined, let's now configure some stateful TCP traffic. Stateful TCP traffic on the N2X is organized into connection groups with simulated clients, simulated servers, and data being transferred between the two. Let's set the data transfer size to be a very large number, say four gigabytes, so that we're mainly dealing with the effects of the data transfer phase of TCP connections, since long-lived TCP connections tend to dominate the real internet. And let's set the number of simulated TCP clients and servers to be 1000. Next, let's set the client-side properties for this connection group, setting the IP addresses as we did before. And we'll do that on the client side right here. Again, setting the address to 192.168.100.10. And likewise for the server-side addressing, setting the IP address of the server to be 192.168.100.200. Lastly, for our stateful TCP connection group, let's set the maximum segment size to 1460 bytes, 
which if we include the IP and Ethernet headers of 20 bytes each, we get 1500 byte long packets, uh, the same as we defined in our stateless traffic definition a moment ago. Also, let's set the RTO or retransmit timeout value to 500 milliseconds. And we'll set that RTO value to be the same on client and server sides. Closing up that dialog, Back in our main N2X GUI, we can see the stateless and stateful traffic we've just defined. So let's now go and set up some measurements. The Agilent N2X offers a very wide array of real-time measurements on both the stateful and stateless traffic. But let's go and choose a few measurements which will be most meaningful for this particular experiment. For our stateless traffic, let's choose the IPv4 throughput in megabits per second for both the transmit and receive sides. And let's count IPv4 packets on the receive side only. Now let's choose some measurements for our stateful TCP traffic, choosing measurements most relevant to this demonstration. In particular, TCP timeouts and TCP fast retransmit occurrences, which indicate triple duplicate ACK events. And finally, TCP receive good put packets, which we will use to count packets per second to compare against our stateless traffic model. Closing our measurements dialog, let's just disable all of our defined traffic before starting the N2X traffic engine. Let's start our traffic engine, then enable the stateless traffic, grab the slider bar and move it up to 100%. watching the results on the right side, and then ramp traffic back down uh, to zero. Likewise, let's do the same thing for the stateful traffic by enabling it, and then grabbing the slider bar and moving it up to 100% of line rate, and then moving it back down to um, zero. Uh, before stopping our measurements. So we can see the results of our back-to-back -back experiment in the lower right portion of our display, where first we transmitted stateless traffic at 100% uh, of line rate, or about 80,000 packets per second. And then we repeated that experiment with uh, a similar uh, stateful TCP traffic profile that was also at 100% of line rate and again about 80,000 packets per second uh, which show up as good put packets in the uh, upper graph in our measurements panel. Now instead of using uh, the slider bar just as we did a second ago to wrap traffic up and down, for the rest of this demonstration I will be using the tick boxes here in the display to simply enable and disable our defined traffic to quickly ramp up and down the offered load to accelerate the demo.